morning, my name is Josh from Cyclops Oz and this is your detailed weather forecast update for Saturday the 3rd of January 2026. I can't believe I'm saying that. Anyways, before I get stuck into the forecast update, if you do kindly consider subscribing, that'd be very much appreciated. We're nearing in on 70,000, but let's get stuck straight into the forecast right now. A lot of rainfall is forecast up in northern Queensland, plus the potential for a tropical low developing in either the Gulf of Carpentaria, but more likely in the Coral Sea, bringing even more rainfall out towards the second week of January to parts of far northern Queensland and also northern Queensland in general. Big time rainfall accumulations are also possible in other locations of the country as well as rainfall and low pressure begins to ramp up and some extreme heat is possible into the southeast. I'll have all the details on that plus a whole lot more in coming up in today's weather forecast update. Let's talk about this low pressure system though up in far northern Queensland. We're beginning to see the development of a mid-level low pressure system here and that is funneling in heavy rainfall around its uh, low pressure centre into far northern Queensland's coastline. This includes Townsville which has copped a bit of a drench this morning, but not as much as a drenching that Palm Island and areas into the Harvey Range and up towards Halifax and the Herbert River uh, area uh, copped a significant amount of rainfall overnight. Falls between 100 to 250 millimetres reported right now. Halifax with 187 millimetres in the gauge. Rollingston, I believe, with 120 millimetres in the gauge. Townsville, a little bit dry with about 50 millimetres in the gauge, but a few spots, particularly closer to the coastline, have picked up some more significant rainfall accumulations. Lots more moisture out here in the Coral Sea as well. As you can see, plenty more showers and thunderstorms feeding into this low pressure center and this is going to be a pretty consistent picture over the next couple of days. I've said in previous forecast updates that this weekend is going to be wet. Lots and lots of rainfall coming through this weekend, particularly tonight into tomorrow morning and this rainfall slowly ramping up through Sunday and into Sunday night and early Monday morning. In fact you can see convergent zone activity as a weak area of low pressure develops once again offshore from the Townsville coastline here or somewhere around this uh, general pocket of the northern Queensland coastline. This will bring in the rainfall here from the north East. You'll also bring in a lot of moisture here from the north, and this is where our convergence zones are going to develop. Along this line here, approximately give or take, somewhere to the south of Townsville, but not too far south as to where Mackay is going to cop the rainfall. Unfortunately, they're looking to remain high and dry for the most part from this rainfall event, but we'll see some significant rainfall accumulations fall somewhere between Townsville down to about Proserpine, most likely around the Bowen area, and this is going to be on Sunday night into Monday morning. Falls could be between 100 to 250 millimetres, increasing to 350 millimetres in some of those coastal ranges. So some big time rainfall accumulations, once again, a possibility in a few of these areas. Mackay, unfortunately, as I said, just a few showers coming through there, maybe 10 to 50 millimeters at a max. I know that's a big spread of rainfall, uh, but for the most part, a lot drier conditions forecast to occur in the Mackay area. This rainfall is then forecast to track slowly towards the north through Monday and Tuesday. You can see rainfall begins to build once again along the Cassidy Coast in towards far northern Queensland. And this is because a much broader area of low pressure begins to develop on Monday and Tuesday, further up the coastline here, away from the Daintree coastline. And this is where our tropical low forecast comes into play because we're likely to see an area of tropical low uh, pressure develop either into the Gulf of Carpentaria or adjacent to the Cape York Peninsula in the Coral Sea. Uh, most likely at this point in time, and most forecast models are agreeing right now that we're going to see an area of low pressure develop somewhere here. Uh, some forecast models calling for it to be much closer to the Queensland coastline. Others are calling for it to be much further away. Either or, it doesn't really matter. We're not expecting a major tropical cyclone impact at this point in time. There's no major forecast model that has been reliably calling for a powerful tropical cyclone impact. So even if this does form close to the coastline or far away from the coastline, it doesn't matter how much time it's going to need because it's not likely to get that strong so let's get that image out of their heads right now. But either way, a tropical low likely to develop out here into the Coral Sea, and that will then eventually track down towards the Queensland coastline, bringing a boatload of rainfall with it. This is where the forecast does start to become a little bit more uncertain. So I'll touch on this in just a few moments. I'll just hammer out the rainfall forecast in the next couple of days uh, whilst we're on the more reliable side of this forecast. So we can kind of split this into two parts, split it down the middle, I say. The first part is going to be that rainfall coming through in the next three or so days, which is going to fall south of Townsville down to about Mackay with some big rainfall accumulations possible around the Air and the Bowen region down towards Proserpine and Hamilton Island. As mentioned, Mackay seeing a maximum of about 50 millimetres. Townsville could see up towards 250 millimetres and there may be one or two locations picking up 350 or 400 millimetres here just south of Townsville. Then part two is going to be the first stages of that developing broad area of low pressure offshore from the Cape York Peninsula and that's going to bring this rainfall a little bit more towards the north. This northeasterly and easterly flow is going to pick up again for the Cassidy Coast and 
and big time rain for the accumulations are then expected into the Cassiri Coast, particularly through Tuesday, Wednesday, and then especially Thursday onwards. Rain for the accumulations here could be between 100 to 200 millimetres a day, amounting to as much as 500 millimetres in this selected time period. And then as we push this forecast out even further, you can see those numbers begin to rise very, very quickly. In fact, forecast modelling here is now calling for 1,000 millimetre plus rain for the accumulations. And I have to say, this has a lot of merit to it, considering all major forecast models are now calling for a boatload of rainfall to come through to the far north Queensland coastline, especially the Cassidy Coast, but also likely the Daintree Coast as well. We're talking about some massive rainfall accumulations, some massive rainfall pot uh, potential, and it's all going to be as a result of this developing tropical low pressure system. So let's talk about that right now. Likely to get itself going from Thursday and Friday onwards, as you can see, still remaining a very broad and quite disorganised system, to be frank, and it really never gets itself up and towards full blown strong tropical low status or tropical cyclone status. We're not really expecting that to occur at this point in time, but you can see it does make a shot of intensifying. It does give it a good red hot crack, as I would like to say here. But by Thursday and uh, by Tuesday and Wednesday, the 13th and 14th of January, respectively, now to especially the 15th of January, respectively, if we have seen a tropical low develop, uh, we're slightly headed into the Northern Territory at this point in time, or it's slid down towards the graveyard into the southern parts of the Coral Sea, well away from the Queensland. And that's going to put the brakes on this rainfall here. And after about the 13th or the 14th, and definitely after the 15th of January, rainfall accumulations are expected to ease off across much of northern and far northern Queensland. By ease off, I mean ease back a little bit, not ease off completely. We're still going to see frequent showers and thunderstorms. It's the wet season now, so this rainfall is going to be set in for the next couple of months, and it is very typical for this time of the year to be extremely wet. But the rainfall it goes from those 100 to 200 millimetre daily accumulations back to the more usual 20 to 50 millimetre daily accumulations across the Cape York Peninsula after about the 13th to the 15th of January, respectively. Definitely after the 15th of January, I reckon this rainfall is going to drop off considerably, but that still leaves us with a week of very heavy rainfall, and you can see Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday forecast be very wet across the Cape York Peninsula. Massive rainfall accumulations. We may be looking at another 1,000 millimetres in the rain gauges by Saturday and Sunday, with more rainfall coming in or tearing in on Saturday and Sunday as well. Rainfall does begin to ease off, though, as the slow pressure system pulls away. Basically, by the time it heads ashore or further towards the west, we're going to see this rainfall really begin to reduce across far northern Queensland, or by the time it pulls away down into the graveyard here, because there are still a lot of options that this system could take. Uh, we'll see this rainfall accumulation numbers begin to reduce. But some big numbers are still expected, and you can see uh, as we have a look at 10-day rainfall accumulations up here in the far northern reaches of Queensland, massive numbers are on the cards. Like I said, 1,000 millimetre plus accumulations now on the cards here outside of Innisfail around Berlin and Kerr. Cairns looking at at least 300 millimetres, but probably getting closer to 500 millimetres there. Innisfail and Tully, I'd be surprised if both locations didn't pick up 1,000 millimetres. Mission Beach could be in for another 1,300 millimetres. There's some big rainfall potential there. Rainfall does begin to drop off as you get further south. Cargill Gap and Hinchbrook uh, and National Park likely to be the last areas to see those 500 millimetre plus accumulations, but still around the Eum and the uh, Halifax area, big time rainfall accumulations are possible there. Big rainfall accumulations also possible into the Harvey Range towards the west and the northwest of Townsville, but I wouldn't be expecting anything too serious developing in those regions, uh, just considering the fact that it is going to be a little bit too far south in relation to the development of this tropical low. So rainfall accumulations for the north Queensland coastline around Townsville likely to be a little bit lighter after about Wednesday or Thursday. Big rainfall accumulations also possible into the Daintree. We may see a couple of isolated falls approaching 1,000 millimetres around Mossman or Daintree Village. Widespread falls between 400 to 600 millimetres expected right up the Daintree coastline, reducing to about 300 millimetres around Cooktown, and then falls in the Atherton Tablelands between about 100 to 300 millimetres, increasing to about 500 millimetres the further towards the east you go. But still, some massive rainfall accumulations expected out there. Keep in mind, for the Atherton Tablelands, to pick up 300 millimetres. That is comparable to seeing seven or 800 millimetres across the Cassidy Coast in that same time frame. It's not record-breaking, it's not massively significant, but it's still some good rain for the accumulations, and they'll be waiting with that with open arms. I can guarantee you that they do need a bit of rainfall out there, that's for sure. Now, flooding is a real big concern. I've been speaking to a lot of people up in far northern Queensland, in particular, uh, some folks from Halifax, and uh, because we've we've seen such heavy rainfall in the last couple of weeks up in far northern Queensland over the last couple of days, because this wet season's really came on thick and fast, the concern is that now a lot of these rivers are at a point, of, uh, a point known of saturation, which is where they can handle the rainfall that they've had, and we're not seeing flood as a result of this rainfall here, 
but they're completely drenched. They're completely saturated. More rainfall, uh, more significant rainfall in a short period of time, like what we're seeing here on the forecast models, will result in much more significant flooding than comparably higher rainfall accumulations that we saw earlier on last week. And what I mean by that is that we only saw minor flooding in the Tully River after 1,300 millimetres at Mission Beach. Only minor flooding. I mean, name another place in Australia where 1,300 millimetres can fall in four days and you only see minor flooding as a result. It is incredible how much rainfall far north Queensland can cope with. But if we saw 500 millimetres in the same area now, because these rivers are at a point known as saturation, it's likely to result in moderate or major flooding. So less rainfall resulting in a much bigger flooding impact. So I would just like to say now for far northern Queensland, particularly areas along the Cassidy Coast, especially if you live in a flood prone location or if you're likely to be uh, cut off, I'd start preparing for the system now. Obviously don't go overboard, don't begin panic buying. And keep in mind that we're not talking about a major tropical cyclone impact coming in here. So it's not like you're gonna lose power or access to the rest of the world for weeks upon weeks upon weeks. Um, it's just gonna be some significant rainfall coming through. But if you are at a risk of being cut off as a result of landslides, plan ahead and make sure you are ready for it. That's my best advice that I can give right now. But of course, stay calm. Make sure you're ready for some flooding as well. Major flooding is most certainly a possibility from this rainfall event, especially if we see a thousand millimeters plus through the Casper Coast, because that will take our three week rainfall accumulations well in excess of two and a half uh, meters for a few of these areas here. So a thousand millimeters it does not spell good news for far northern Queensland. They can cope with it, but it's still not good news. We need to keep very close tabs on this situation right now, which is continuing to rapidly develop. I'm not going to comment on the tropical cyclone chances right now because the forecast is still way too uncertain. And to be frank, it's, it worries more people when I talk about a tropical cyclone than it does good. So don't be uh, worried right now. There's nothing brewing. There's nothing significant coming. You don't need to be worrying about a Category 3 or a Category 4 or a Category 5 coming through. And especially for southeastern Queensland as well, there's no Alpha 2.0 coming through. But in terms of the chance, it's still a very uncertain forecast. And I don't like giving uncertain forecasts. So I'm going to give it a couple more days until I know exactly what to expect. Southeast Queensland had a good thunderstorm or two last night out around the Texas area. We may see a good couple of thunderstorms tonight as well, particularly to the northeast of New South Wales, around Narrabri, Inverell and Moree. We could also see a couple of stronger thunderstorms further south in New South Wales, the potential for severe thunderstorms around the Orange Parks and Dubber area, and maybe a couple of strong thunderstorms extending down into the Capital Territory as well, and even one or two thunderstorms extending down into the Gibson region, maybe even a severe thunderstorm or two extending right down towards Victoria. So it's going to be a bit of a storm day across parts of the eastern states, though southeast Queensland completely missing out on the storm activity because there is bugger all instability in the atmosphere through southeast Queensland. But values between 800 to 1200 in towards New South Wales, it could give way to one or two strong thunderstorms, definitely some widespread pulse thunderstorm activity, that's for sure. Sunday will be a little bit more convectively active, particularly closer to the border, and we may be talking about a bit of a severe thunderstorm outbreak uh, around the border, into the border ranges and the scenic rim through southeast Queensland. I don't expect any Anything too crazy, but we do have some solid dew points coming through, uh, which will support some higher precipitation thunderstorms. You can see those dew points and temperatures climbing uh, considerably higher than what they normally do for this time of the year. Uh, definitely some higher precipitation stuff can be expected around the border ranges. And if we also have a look at wind shear right now, whilst I don't believe wind shear to be uh, too flash across southeast Queensland tomorrow afternoon and tomorrow evening, you can see these values here between 25 to 30 knots. It'll get some strong pulse thunderstorm activity off the ground. And we could be seeing some big rain dumpers and also some significant lightning activity, not too frequent, but still some significant lightning activity in towards those border ranges and maybe even the scenic rim of southeast Queensland. I'd like to get this convective forecast models on this before I make a full forecast so maybe wait for tomorrow and I'll give a bit more detail on this weather event here. Monday's forecast will be a pretty big storm day especially for northeastern New South Wales but also for pockets of Queensland. This is going to kind of work in two parts. A lot of scattered pulse and shower thunderstorm activity forecast across northern New South Wales and this will also include Sydney and Newcastle as well. A couple of good thunderstorms possible on Monday. First day back at work for most uh, and then a couple of more stronger thunderstorms that could potentially get severe out towards Charleville and Rome out here. Lots of lightning forecast in these ones, also for parts of northern New South Wales, lots of lightning on the cards. And then some higher precipitation storm modes here expected closer to the southeast Queensland coastline. This will include areas into the scenic rim and also parts of the South Burnett and the Wyvernhoe outlook. However, for Brisbane and the Gold Coast, I do believe for the most part they are going to miss these thunderstorms. Maybe a thunderstorm or two running into the Caboolture or the Ipswich area, but I don't expect anything too crazy on Monday. And then Tuesday and Wednesday onwards return to drier and calmer conditions with 
maybe a few showers popping up Wednesday and Thursday across Southeast Queensland. But for the most part, that is uh, the Southeast Queensland situation. A bit of an interesting one for this time of the year. The one thing holding back these thunderstorms is going to be instability. I mean, there's really not much of it on the forecast modelling right now. These numbers are abysmal and they're not going to get those higher end severe thunderstorms going. So it's not something we have to be worrying about right now. But still definitely a feature that I would like to keep an eye on. Some strong thunderstorms with heavy rainfall and lots and lots of lightning and definitely some intense lightning activity now very much a possibility across parts of southeastern Queensland and northeastern New South Wales, particularly Sunday and especially Monday. In terms of other interesting weather happening around the nation, apart from some boiling conditions on the forecast across southeastern Australia, not much. So let's talk about those boiling conditions right now. Really warming up next Wednesday and Thursday across parts of southeastern Australia. Mildura, a top of 44 degrees expected on Wednesday. Adelaide, 41. A lot of places through parts of outback South Australia and into outback Western Australia, particularly around the Nullarbor, 47, 48 degrees. And then have a look at this here, uh, up and towards northwestern WA. This is a, 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 my first super hot day of the year for, of the season for Northwestern WA. You can see Panawanica up here at 48 degrees, pushing closer towards 49 here, getting close to the coastline. So we're definitely talking about a scorcher of a day, that's for sure. And this is Wednesday, the 7th of uh, January here. Tuesday is expected to be warm, but not quite turbo warm like we're talking about here. Some very warm conditions forecast into the gold fields here, 47 pushing 48 degrees in one or two locations. And then Thursday forecast to bring this heat in towards South Australia and then pockets of Victoria as well. You can see temperatures here expected to increase to about 47, 48 degrees here through the Gawler Ranges in South Australia, and then temperatures pushing closer to 45 and 46 degrees in towards southeastern South Australia, getting closer to 46 degrees around Mildura. Yeah, keeping it short and sweet, it is going to be an absolute Gorgeous, that's for sure. Friday, keeping things a little bit cooler. Still a very warm top into the 40s expected before that nasty cool change come th uh, comes through. And you can see Saturday expected to be much cooler. So really getting four seasons in one week across southeastern Australia. Uh, and this is going to really elevate our fire danger ratings. I cannot stress enough how massive the fire danger ratings are going to be on Wednesday and Thursday especially. We've got the highest indexes here in our fire danger ratings through New South Wales, Victoria and South Australia. Given the temperatures, given how dry conditions are, and also given the fact that we may see a couple of dry thunderstorms around on Thursday. This is a really concerning picture now. You need to be doing everything within your means this week to prepare for some incredible fire conditions on Tuesday, Wednesday, and especially on Thursday. Some massive fires can start in conditions like this. And when we're talking about temperatures getting up towards 45, 46, 47 degrees, and not to mention the fact that winds on Wednesday and Thursday are gonna be coming in from the uh, north and the uh, northwest. Uh, if we have a look here at these wind gusts, they're gonna be between 10 to 20 knots, pushing up towards 30 knots into the afternoon hours. These are some very strong winds and these are going to fan those fires that get going. So massive fire danger ratings forecast on Wednesday and Thursday. Definitely the worst that I've seen in a couple of years for parts of New South Wales and Victoria. And this is now resembling a similar setup to what we saw around Christmas New Year's 2019 into 2020 through New South Wales and parts of Victoria. Very concerning indeed. Definitely something that you need to be watching quite closely. And just before I wrap this video up, Tropical Cyclone Iggy has made a meal out of some healthy conditions. I mean, it's looking very, very bad this morning. This is a look at the Tropical Cyclone right now. Uh, I believe it has been downgraded to an extra Tropical Cyclone. I actually didn't uh, check, but if I was at bomb, I'd be downgrading this in a heartbeat. It is forecast to strengthen though and head out towards the warm waters well offshore from West Australia. It's not going to be any impact of Western Australia at all. And it may get up towards Category 2 or Category 3 status by the time it gets itself well offshore into the Indian Ocean. No threat to land, but it'll be an interesting system to see if it can claw itself back from the absolutely abysmal state that it is in right now. That is going to do it though for today's weather forecast update. I hope everybody has had a great week and a great weekend as well. Enjoy the last two days if you're returning to work on Monday. My best. If not, aren't you lucky? Uh, good rainfall up in the north, very warm and dangerous fire conditions in the southeast. A bit more pleasant into the southwest, but I would like to see an end to these mid-30 days and return it to the lower 30s or upper 20s and missing winter already. Classic Perth speech right there. But that's going to do it for me today. Massive thank you to the channel sponsors. Their names are on right now. I'll catch you on the next storm. Goodbye.